and just talk and leave the, leave the stage and be like, that was awesome. Me and God did a good job. But when you have to get into the hearts of women and you have to do life with them and you have to walk out the good and the bad and the ugly and the fun, it's, it's interesting. And I, for a long time, and you've probably heard me share this throughout Women's Conference, I didn't really want to do that, had no desire to do that, actually told God I wasn't going to do that, recommended God to find someone else to do that, and... Um, it just didn't work out that way. So I was like, well, I guess I have to figure this thing out. Because like I told you last night, I don't want to pastor the reputation of church women that are the mean, conniving, cutting, gossiping. You know what I'm talking about. That's not who God is, so that's not who we as women should be. So I'm like, all right, God, well, you're going to have to help me because I just am not too great at this leadership thing with women. But this morning, I have invited, actually, I didn't invite them. I told them um, they were doing it. Even this morning, I had had someone trying to bow out of my panel. I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. We're all going up there. Everybody's going up there. So um, I'm going to go ahead and invite these amazing ladies to come on up. And I don't know what your seating arrangement is, but Trey will tell you. Trey or Bethany will tell you if you are sitting in the wrong seat. But um, give these girls a big hand. They are amazing women. And um, I don't spend enough time with them. I don't hang out enough with them. I don't do enough social events with them. But they still love me. It's awesome. And um, my mother's the one who tried to get out of it this morning. I'm just going to tell you all that. I'm like, Mom, she's like, oh, all those young girls look so pretty. You don't need me up there. I was like, oh, yes, we do. Thank you. I was like, yes, because we've been recently having this, um, I've been doing a, a specific Bible study with a portion of this group. Not everybody has been able to attend because of work schedules and stuff like that. And so we've been going through, I didn't know if we mentioned, we probably are going to need a couple extra microphones. So they can talk. Are they all up there? Y'all have two? Oh, I see them. But anyway, they, um, we've been doing this thing called Outrageous Women. Turn to somebody and give them a high five. Say, you're an outrageous woman. That can mean a lot of things. But we're going to go with the positive meaning of outrageous women. So we've been doing this with a portion. And, and one of the areas that we talked about one week was called outrageous trust. And so I told them actually on Monday night is when I let them know they were doing this. So when the Bible says to be ready in season and out of season and just always be ready, this is a picture of that. And um, immediately I had Anna Pakota say, what, wait, what questions, what, what, what do we need to study before we get, I was like, oh no, you're not going to get to study anything. You get no notes. You get no questions. Yes. Is, am I in that monitor so they can hear me? Can y'all hear me now? Check, 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 check. Yes. So some of them brought their notes. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you some, like, super fast introduction. And then for this session, I'm just going to facilitate a little bit, a couple of questions, and let them talk. And I would get your notebooks ready because if my mom or Molly Wagner open their mouth, you will say, you will write down whatever they say. You will tweet it right now because we've been in a session, and they'll say something. I'm, I, I'm like ready to go on some spiritual little moment, and I, I will get ready, and then Molly will be like, la, 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 and I'm like, And we all just kind of stop, and I just write that down, and we shift. So she's actually going to have a busier schedule than Dave, I'm pretty sure, coming up in the next year. I don't know. What do you think, Dave? (laughs) She's like, no, I'm busy enough, people. Okay, I'm going to give you some quick introductions. Um, This is Danielle Lawrence. Woo! And... um, Danielle founded and started and runs and oversees and supervises and administers and spiritually facilitates and everything else. Our arts ministry. Um, 
Yes, and she's she's delegated kind of like me, but yet we still are involved. Like I'll be in, I will be in worship tonight. It's just one of those things we still can't get away from. And then she also runs our Women's Freedom Weekends here. So when we do those, she does an amazing job and just helps lead in a lot of areas. She just came back from speaking at a women's conference two weeks ago. So I was like, yeah. So she's been um, really busy, and she's um, a trusted friend. All of these people are trusted friends. Jadine Stricker, she is... Um, She's had a lot of years of experience in education. Um, she's actually the head of our school here at Jubilee Christian Academy. Um, she also gets the privilege to work for me at Learning RX, and she helps run a bunch of stuff at the church, and she does a lot of things. And I, she knows me from 30 years ago when she was like best friends with my brother, and I was the kid's sister. So now she's happy she was nice to me because I'm her boss in two places. So it's awesome. And um, anyway, this is Bethany McClendon. Everyone knows Bethany. Every year we just decide Bethany is our permanent Priceless Girl of the Year. We would like to award it to her every year. And um, so Bethany is an amazing person. She, um, she has done ministry. She's done things her whole life. And right now she and Trey are really our, um, I don't know what title we would give them, um, Events director, coordinator, creative, extraordinaire. Um, if you don't know what to do, Bethany will tell you what to do. That is her title. Yes, she'll make it up. She will. Um, this awesome lady does not need an introduction because she's amazing. She's the, she's the person in our meetings that all of a sudden will start, and she'll be like, now, girls. And we're all like, and Pam's like, get your pen ready. And so she's like, let me tell you something. We were doing a session on commitment, which we were going to talk about this morning, but we're not going to go there, I think. But she was like, let me just tell you, leaders don't have an option to be committed. I was, and she just says it with a smile, like it's no big deal. And we're like, oh, yeah. So anyway, but she's amazing, uh, amazing pastor and an amazing mom. And um, she's awesome, so I won't say more than that because I'll cry on that one too. This is Mary Lynn Benitez. Everybody get up for Mary Lynn. Mary Lynn, um, and I'm going to give you a little bit of people's background besides their church portion, um, but Mary Lynn um, has been in the dance world, ballroom dance world, most of her life. She actually was uh, competed. She won championships. She instructs. She judges. She, you know, like Dancing with the Stars, she could be one of those judge people. She is one of those judge people, just not on that show. And um, she's been also a major part um, of our arts ministry here. And when we first started, she was a big part with Danielle as well. And um, now she just does everything. She has a big heart for outreach um, and a lot of things she's delving into right now in her life. And for the conference, she is the budget manager. And that scares me a little. We love her for that. I have learned these words. You should go ask Mary Lynn. I have learned those words instead of saying yes up front. So I've gotten better, right? A little bit. All right, next here's Karina Miller. Give a big hand for Karina. And um, Karina is, you want to talk about outreach extraordinaire. She has a heart for women and for people all over. She's a, the most, one of the most real people that I know. You get the real no matter whether you want it or not. And I love that about her. She's an amazing mom and wife. She has owned businesses. She has helped run her husband's business. She has, um, and everything she sets her hand to do is a success. She's a Zumba instructor extraordinaire, and um, she's awesome. And I should go to Zumba so I could look like her. And um, which she encourages us to do. Danielle and I are I, her two of her little Zumba disciples. And do, Danielle actually goes. So... Um, that's the difference, right? We're working on that. Ask Karina. Anyway, she's been a very successful woman her whole life and just has a lot of amazing gifts and talents that a lot of people don't see because she's a behind-the-scenes person. But she's up here today. Um, and she's got a lot of wisdom. Next to her is Althea Sauer. So, Althea. Woo! Um, Althea, uh, she and her husband Frank manage all of our Connect ministry. They oversee all of that. 
And um, during, she does a lot of stuff with prayer and intercession and connect groups. And she is extremely gifted and talented. A lot of times when we do have women's events and different things like for our network, she does, she'll throw together like table decorations like in five minutes, budgeting. She is a Pinterest goddess. She is cheap. I know. She can do it cheap. And um, she is a lot of fun. And she, she's always smiling. She's always laughing. You see that. And um, she's an amazing mom. She has a lot with all her kids that she helps to manage and do and, um, and a grandmother. And um, doesn't she look super young? I know. And um, so she is, uh, she and Frank just are really awesome leaders here in our church and just a real blessing to us. Um, next to her, and again, she probably doesn't need an introduction either, Pastor Pam Ballinger. And um, Pam is in, the, um, is in the accelerated plan of being a pastor with very little notice. Yeah, and it's, some days it's fun, and some days it's fun. And... Um, so you have us. That's right. Danielle said you have us. So anyway, uh, Pam, uh, she works full time for the um, postal service, which is why last night on the video she said, don't quit your day job. Oops. I mean, daydream. And because that is her daydream is to quit her day job one day. Um, but right now she's done that uh, for many years and she served in areas of the church even before she came to Jubilee. And, um, and now she needs extra prayer because she's married to my brother. And, um, and yeah, she, she's the singles pastor. How do you think she got married? Duh. That's when Lynn all of a sudden had this weird interest in the edge group. I was like, what? So anyway, uh, next to her, again, not a lot of introduction, and that is Molly Wagner. On this top row are the creative people, I'm telling you. So Molly is also one of the most creative people I know. Um, you may not know she has a blog. Has anybody ever read her blog? And you should check out Molly's blog because she touches women's lives all over from her computer. And um, just, just sharing her real life and sharing things that I think are really valuable and are very real that you can apply to your real life. And, um, and she also, she gets accolades just for living with Dave being married to Dave, and um, she's an amazing mom, and all other stuff. She's awesome. We love Molly. Molly, she's awesome. She's she has been. She has actually over the creative team for um, Priceless. Also, she and Cheryl Foster, and um, and then Anna Pakoda. Woo woo. We call Anna La Jefa because that's the boss in Spanish. And so this morning I said to Becky, we were walking out the door, I said, I'm wearing a t-shirt because La Jefa told me I had to wear a t-shirt. Um, but uh, Anna is, she runs, uh, oversees all of our women's ministries as a whole. She organizes, administrates. She's also the vice president of her company. Um, she has a bachelor's degree and a master's degree and more education than we want to even shake a stick at. And um, she's a smart girl. She just needs a husband and we'll be good. Yes, but he has to be like really, ama like drop dead handsome, really wealthy and willing to do whatever she says. And that's the only criteria. I think that's the only criteria. Is that right? Yeah, that's it. So anyway, okay. I didn't want to spend too much time on introductions, but I want you to know who these ladies are both in the church and outside the church because they, a lot of them, they, they've done successful things, both they're still doing them outside the church, but they're also laying down their lives for ministry. And um, so enough of that. Okay. Are y'all ready? Get your microphones ready. So I'm going to preface um, this thing about trust, which actually is just going to dovetail right from what we did last, last night. So in this process, which I won't tell you what Trey McClendon told me, I should name my message last night. He said the process, blank, I'll let you fill in the blank. But um, he's like, name it that. And I was like, yeah, it really does sometimes. But um, so in that, there is a trust factor that has to come in because that's what's going to keep you in the process. And this morning, we're going to be really practical with that. And so when we did this study, we, we did a whole study on Hannah. 
which was awesome for me because I've been where Hannah is in the Bible. So where she was believing God and believing God and believing God to have a child and she couldn't have a child and she was so devastated and she was so overwhelmed by that. And here she is making vows to God in the in his house saying, God, if you'll do this, I'll give him back to you. I'll give my child back to you and doing all of these things. But there was this big gap between the snapshot and when it happened. And so she had to have a level of trust in that part of her life, in that time of her life. And um, so we started talking about trust. And so there's some questions that we're going to focus on. And we're, I want you girls to be as real as you feel comfortable being real, okay? And um, you don't have to be as real as me because I just like throw it out there and I just apologize later. But you guys can do whatever you feel comfortable with. But um, so... One of the first things that we talked about when we did this this time is we talked with each other about what is your personal trust test right now. So I want you to think about that for you. And I want you all to start thinking about an answer for that. What is your personal trust test right now? Okay? What are you having to trust God for? What's he testing you in your trusting? Okay? So who wants to go? Y'all got to be quick. I'm on a time limit because Dave is going to come see I'll go. I'm not going. This is all them. Go ahead. Can you hear me? It's on. Is it on now? Um, so my personal trust now, um, it actually has, from a couple of weeks ago when we were speaking about this, my personal trust issues were with finances. Um, God dealt with me severely with that. Um, but right now where I am with, with trust issues is believing that God has, as my sister-in-law, sister-in-law said, um, God has me on this accelerated path right now. And trusting and believing that I am who he says that I am called for this position where I am right now. And constantly trusting him for that. Even when I don't feel like I am on some days or even some weeks, but just trusting and believing that God knows what he's doing. And, um, and I don't, and my trust has to be in him. And also one of the things we're talking about is that time delay gap. You know, God tells you something. He, he gives you a promise. And like Angela was speaking about last night, you want it to develop instantly. But there's that delay. There's that process that you have to go through. And so just not giving up and just trusting during that process. That's where I am right now. Okay. Who else? Um, naturally, for me, when it comes to trust, I'm a, a complete control freak. <laughs> so I need to have things my way when I want them, just naturally. And that's just how I've been. When it comes to something that I struggle with is my children. Because in all respect, I want them to follow my lead. And that doesn't always go the way you want it to go. You know, they've got their own will. So... My well, my control had to stop, and I had to give that control to Jesus because it truly freed me from the pressure of trying to get everything prepped, trying to make thing, everything perfect and right. It, it was allowing my children to flourish in the way that they needed to without me coming down on them with what I feel is best and allowing God to just make them into the people that he chooses them to be. So I had to allow God to take that trust from, from just what I feel is best and give that trust to him to lead my children in the way they need to go. Pam said something at one of our meetings, a different one, but she said, I'm, I'm trying to learn to be righteous and not always be right. You should write that down. Every woman should say that, and then you should actually try to do it. All right. Um, an area of trust for me is, uh, stop, maybe. <laughs> they always get tissues out because I always cry. <laughs> okay. Um, an area of trust, uh, a challenge for me is insecurity, and the journey that my family has been on in the last three years has been a a big place where I find I have to find my security in Jesus and what he says, not what I see, and not the, the physical challenges that we face with our, you know, 
with, with Trey's disability, with his, with his accident, or the limitations on finances, or the limitations on traveling, or, you know, God says we're going to go here, we're going to do this. Well, I don't, I don't see it. I don't see it with what income happens or what I'm physically able to carry. But I have to have a, a constant reminder that my security is not as a wife in my husband or in, or in people or the support that we have, but it's, it's truly from Jesus. And all the other things just add to it. And I have to find the, the reassurance daily that my security, that I trust that that security comes from him, even when I don't see it possible. So. That's really good, Bethany. And we love her. I tell her every day that she's my hero. She's pretty awesome. When, um, when we feel like that we are overwhelmed, I just think about Bethany. And then I don't feel as overwhelmed. I'm like, oh, I'm really selfish. I'm going to just stop that right now. <laughs> She's pretty incredible. Um, I'm going to answer the question in a personal point, but I wanted to also share a verse that just came to mind while Bethy was talking. Um, but Psalms 9, 10, and this is, I'm going to read that from the Amplified Bible. and says, um, and they who know your name, who have experience and are acquainted with your mercy, will lean on and confidently put their trust in you. For you, Lord, have not forsaken those who seek, inquire of you, and for you on the authority of God's word and the right of their necessity. It's a pretty awesome verse, but, you know, a lot of times I was thinking about this when we were doing our meeting about trust, is that we are believing and trusting God for something, and then we suddenly, like, forget everything that he's already done for us. And it's like we forget that we're already acquainted with his ability, we're already acquainted with who he is. Um, and so sometimes we read the story about the Israelites and we're like, what's wrong with those people? Why are they not trusting? Didn't they see that God did all these things for them? And then we do the exact same thing. I guess I, I do that. I don't know if you guys, but I do that. Um, and for me, I guess, just realizing that the process is not exactly the way that I wanted it to be. Um, I'm a planner. I, I plan everything. I plan my day. You wouldn't think that, but um, I plan everything, and I like to plan other people's lives, too, um, <laughs> and things. Um, so, and I like things to be a certain way, and for me, even as, um, as Angela was speaking yesterday, that image, I could see the image, but the process looked different for me. It's like, we want to actually determine what that process is going to be like. You know, we want the process that's going to take me from A to B to look a certain way, and we we figure it out. It should be this way. And so, but God is in control of the whole thing. You know, he's in control of that process too, but we like our own process better. Um, so anyway, so for me, just, just realizing that because of the process and because of the way that he's taken me right now, and because I didn't get married at 22 and I don't have three babies already, um, I've been able to do things I would have never done before. Um, and that that process has looked different, has felt different. Anyways, but for me right now, to answer the real question, um, for me right now, it's just trusting that, you know, he is able. And I've been saying that a lot recently, but he is able. Just, rem just remembering that he's already done all these things and that he sees ahead better and that he knows the process better. Um, but for now, honestly, you know, living alone at almost 30, I'll be 30 in June. Um, Who wants to look like that at almost 30? Seriously? Aww. You look awesome. Oh, thank you. You're boyfriend. welcome. Um, so, anyways, but yeah, at almost 30, and, and I, love, I love my life. I, I disciple a group of young girls, and, and I love the fact that they see that, you know, that you can be single and successful and, and, and go p girl power. Um, but, <laughs> but, you know, just living alone, and I know I'm way past my two minutes. We weren't supposed to take two minutes, more than two minutes, but I'm almost done. Um, but, but just living alone and, um, and not having someone and, and just having fear about the future. And, and I love, love children. I'm a Tia to lots of little kids that I love dearly. Um, but really just trusting that, that that's in the future and that, um, and that God knows my heart and that I want those little kids so bad and that I want a husband. I don't want to be alone. Um, but that's just being real. And, you know, it's, it's a trust issue that 
it's hard sometimes to see it, but anyways, that's my personal one. All right, I'm going to shift questions, and we're going to, you can hand the mic to whoever. So in this tra trust test that we have, and so you heard some of that, so now I want us to, to talk a little bit about um, what do we do in the time of delay and in the t that gap to hold on to that trust and not, and not quit? So we know what it is. We know that it's God helping me. But what do you do in the process? What do you do? What do you do to hold on to that trust in this, in this delay time? So, Karina. Okay. <laughs> um, this is really hard. I've been in probably one of the most difficult seasons in my life for the past um, about two months, a little bit over two months now. Um, if I can describe it, you know, from my point of view, I have like this perfect like town and country type magazine life where everything is perfect. I have the perfect husband, the perfect children, you know, everything's perfect in my life. And then all of a sudden, everything just gets stripped in my peace and where I found that it was my security just gets taken out of me. And um, I would go up and I just cry out, God, where are you? I thought I was your little girl. How can you allow this happen to me? Haven't I been faithful to you? Haven't I done all these things for you? Haven't I still doing all these things for you? Why? And it's in those moments where the enemy starts throwing everything that he can at my mind and telling me like all of these things that they are not true because that's his specialty, you know, he's a liar. But it's in those moments when I feel that I'm beaten down that I have to grab my sword and my shield and my belt of truth and my plate of righteousness and my sandals of the gospel and my helmet and say, this is not what he'd say that I am. Amen. Amen. This is not what he'd say that I am. And I just have to grab a hold of that and fight back because he has given me the tools to fight back because the God that lives inside of me, it's bigger. And I just got this revelation a couple of days ago, you know, because, you know, we can get intimidated by the enemy and his lies. And God spoke to me a couple of days ago, and he says, if I am not intimidated of the enemy, why are you? And I was like, yeah, why am I? I was like, yeah, why am I? If you're not intimidated at the enemy, why am I? You know, and I start fighting back. And I'm telling you, even this morning, you know, it was difficult. And I just had to grab myself. And I literally stood in my front, uh, and, and in the front of my house. And I stood up. And I went, and I'm like, grab my imaginary sword and stand up. And I'm like, I'm fighting back today. Yes. You know what? And it, it, is, it, is, it is not that it's in my power to do it. I will be crazy to think that I can do this in my power, but it's in the power of the one that lives inside of me that I can do it. So if I can, if I can give you anything about just going through that process, you know, and what do you do? It's like, do not quit and remember who say that you are every single day and remember who he is. Because he's the one that lives inside of you and gives you the strength to push through and to give you the victory. Amen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you four, four W words. Some of you need to turn your weeping and your worry into worship and warfare. When she was just talking. And so, you know, we, when we were talking about Hannah, there was a season of weeping and she turned it into worship. And what I just heard out of Karina, there's been a season of weeping for her that she has turned into warfare. And so, you know, we need to take our, our weeping in the season when we don't see it and the disappointment and the worry of what if and what if it never happens and what if this goes wrong and what if that. And you need to turn your worship, just like Karina said. You need to know who you are. And you say, no, wait a second. 
I'm not going to cry through this. I'm going to worship through this. No, I'm not going to worry about this. I'm going to, I'm going to fight through this. Yes. Turn to somebody and say, fight like a girl. Come on. Like girl. All right, go ahead. Keep going. Oh, who is it? oh, go ahead. I didn't know who had that. Danielle, I have the mic now. Okay, so my answer is not as um, heart-wrenching. But um, <laughs> Karina always makes me cry. I so know. anyway, um, I believe that when you're going through the process, you know, when we talk about the process, it's like we're, we're, we, we're going somewhere, right? You're looking for that place to go because we talk about destiny and things like that. And so when we think about destiny, it's such a giant word like destiny. You know, it's like, what is that? It's like this big giant thing, you know? And I think that the process is the destiny, part of the destiny because destiny is every day. And so I believe that in the process, what's so important is, well, for one, I don't think the process is ever over and um, that's comforting. But anyway, um, I think it just changes. And I think that it's so important every day that our, our focus is obedience. Because when we, when we really seek God and we ask him what to do and where we are, he speaks to us and we listen and when we obey. And when we obey him, then we are in our destiny. And we can impact other people. And that's when we're impacting. We're constantly changing. And so um, I just think that obedience is, is extremely important every single day because we're always looking for that next big thing. But this right here, that can be the big thing if we listen to him and we do what he tells us to do. Amen. Get your phone out. No. Just, um, no just thinking about some of the difficult times in our lives. We've, we've had a pretty, pretty good life, but, you know, everyone gets that place. And you think about trust and you realize that um, you get to you get the place that seems so desperate and so dark and you and you hit a moment and you're like the alternative to not trusting God in that moment is so much worse than you can even imagine in your worst moment so you have no choice but to trust God and I think that you you know you you realize people in situations and circumstances they'll disappoint you they'll let you down they won't be what you thought they were and unless you have the love of Christ with you through that moment, you just, you can't, you can't you, it's almost unfathomable to, to picture the flip side of that, going through some of those circumstances without Christ. So it's not that it's easy to trust, but you, you just do because what's your other choice? You, yeah. Make sense? Yeah. yeah. Everybody's like, oh, Mary Lynn's going to speak. <laughs> um, I think that sometimes, I know for myself, I've heard a lot of this before, like I can even say decades, it takes me decades to get things. Um, but when you're going through the process, there's some of us with the personality that when we hear keep your eyes on Jesus, what we do is we keep our eyes on the snapshot. and that, for certain personalities, puts you in a cycle of striving. When you're striving, you're not resting or trusting Jesus. Um, so it really, like we even sang it today, and I, I've sang that song how many times? You know, um, you put your eyes above the waters. You know, well, I've, I, I got a picture of myself I know that feeling where the water's up to here and you're like, I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it. And I've got my eyes this way, looking where I'm going. And that just keeps me here, you know, struggling. Um, this season, so I'm going to kind of combine the last question. This season, I've been, my test has been exercising, keeping my eyes in my relationship with my Lord and really getting to know who he is and who I am in him. And then I discovered that I stopped saying that I strive, and I recognized that my testing was in patience, my testing was in resting, um, and then I discovered the verb trust. 
I didn't, I was the one when she said, when they were talking about trust, I was like, trust, wait, what's the difference between faith and trust? And I, I, it really just kept going around in my head. And then Angela, just so quick, because she's got her words, she was like, well, trust is a verb. It's what we do. So all that to say, it's where we're, where we're looking. That's going to help us get through a process. Like Danielle says, it keeps on transitioning and into the next process. But a lot of times that process is to deal with our personal characters. So for me, my last process was dealing with striving and learning to not strive but to look and to embrace that relationship. Um, so that's my yeah. Awesome. But you see why I love like hanging out with them now? I'm like, this is super fun. Okay, go ahead. We do laugh a lot. We do sometimes too much. Yeah. Um, the, if I remember right, the question was, what do we do in the process, right, while we're trusting? Whatever it's whatever I want to say? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, um, you know, when I, first, when I first moved here and I moved here to work at the school, um, you know, it was a very exciting thing. I got this big going away party in Arkansas, and it was like, I'm going to change the world. And, we, and, you know, and I was thinking about, she said, I had a snapshot of what was going to happen when we got here. And when I got here, I hated it. And I thought, God, you hate me. That's why you sent me here, right? <laughs> and um, and I've, um, I was saved under the Ballingers when I was 12, so I'm, I was very, very close to them. And, you know, it was, it, it was a hard thing for lots of years. And, and God gave this picture, and I have this picture of the school, and I have this picture of my life, you know, and it involves, you know, marriage and kids and things. And, but when I moved here, you know, I moved further from my family. I'm single. And I thought, God, the only thing I don't want to do is move further from my family. And my, my, one of my brothers lives in California, so I'm as far away from him as I can possibly be. I mean, the only way I could be further is if I go to Jacksonville to the East Coast, you know. And, but God, God said, that's, that's what I want you to do because there's this job that has to get done. You know, like the video said, what if it's for his glory? You know, and a lot of times the picture isn't what we think it's going to be. And so when I got here, I hated it. And I thought, God, uh, why did you do this to me? I would, I actually, I think I told probably Angela a couple of times, you don't like me. That's why you brought me here, right? And, um, but in the process of getting to this picture and getting to where God is going to bring this school and bring my life, in the process of all of that, God begins to whittle. And God, be, I was very arrogant. Um, I, I think I'm right most of the time. And... If you don't think I'm right, then I referred to the first thing I said was I'm right most of the time, right? And, um, but God began to whittle. And I remember going in pastor's office and saying, you think I could run the school? And he'd be like, no, absolutely not, not ever. And asking Angela, could I run the school? No, you cannot run the school, get out of my office. And, um, but I had this snapshot, you know, and I, and I came to do this. And, and a lot of times in the process, we lose sight of where we're going. And we lose sight of what God's doing. And we lose sight of his ability. But, but what we have to learn to do, you know, now nine years down the road, I still don't have a high school. You know, we still don't have a high school. But we're going to. <laughs> That's got to be one of my teachers back there. <laughs> I pay them to say that. Um, we will because we, should, we don't want to send our kids out in eighth grade. We want to train them in the kingdom of God all the way through. You know, and now I'm ta I talked to Marvin Barham about a Christian school in Little Rock. And we're talking about Christian schools in other nations. And so now not only has God kept the same snapshot, he's expanded the picture. Right? Because we trust. And the thing you do in the meantime, is, and this is what I think every day when I get up and think, God, I don't know. Today I don't know if I can do this. But I, every day I get up and I say, I'm going to love the one that's right in front of me. So in the process... You love the one that's right in front of you. You love that kid of yours. You love your husband. You love your church. I'm going to go to church. I'm going to serve. I'm going to love. I'm just going to love what's, I'm going to love the person in front of me. I'm going to do the job that's in front of me, and then I'm going to let God take care of all the rest. I just want to say really quickly. No, go ahead. About um, what do we do when we're in the process. Um, I have two things. Um, very quickly, before probably about a year or two before Trey's accident, Angela spoke a message about asking God for your daily portion. 
And, um, and sometimes that's not necessarily even for the entire day, but sometimes it's moment by moment. Yeah. And so I would rehearse that verse about David, God asking, God, give me my portion. And for the, my portion is to make it through this next doctor's visit, this next hour. God, I need you to help me here. Or I need you to help me just get my kids in bed. <laughs> just, just let me get to this next 45-minute process. But as women, we try, and I, or at least I do, I make, like, Trey's like, okay, that was a very long series of questions. I'm like, okay, we need to do this, we need to do this, we got to go to the store, and I have to do this, they need baths, and we got to go to the pharmacy and get this filled. And he's like, no, 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 no. Let's just do one thing at a time. And so I have to stop and say, okay, God, for the next 30 minutes, I need you to give me a portion of grace to let me stay focused on where I'm supposed to get to. Because so quickly we can become overwhelmed and see the 8,000 things that we have to do that we don't get anything accomplished, that we don't get anywhere, but we go backwards in our spirit and in our mind. We go backwards. We get discouraged. We get overwhelmed. We get frustrated. We get short-tempered. Yeah. It's okay. No, let me just take a moment. Wherever that is, okay, God, for the next, the next half a day, I need you to help me accomplish these goals, these tasks that I have before me. But give me grace. Give me a portion of grace. Not more than enough because the, the grace that he's given me for this moment won't be good for tomorrow. It's only good for today. And yesterday what got me through is not available anymore. But, God, I need what, I, what it will take to get me through this next moment. And he is always faithful to provide that. And the, the second thing was words. Um, that's why I have my phone out. Um, my husband texted me. He's like, put your phone down. I was like, no, no, no. It's for a scripture. Wait, Trey told you to put your phone down? <laughs> what? Thank you. <laughs> Go ahead. Thank you. I actually said send Kleenex, and it's for my Bible. But um, a few weeks ago, I sent Angela um, and Jadine a message, and I heard, like, as audible as I could, the words of Pastor saying this verse and I just like lost it in my car and I was so overwhelmed because the presence of God just like showed up and from the time you know as a child growing up in this house hearing him so passionate about the word of God it was yeah. it was life to him it was not okay this is what I have to do but teaching us a passion for his word this verse, sometimes we would almost be like, okay, pastor, we have heard this so many times. But Psalms 5, verse 12, for you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor, you will surround him as with a shield. And the verse before this, this is what you do in the process. But let all those who rejoice, let all those rejoice who put their trust in you. Let them ever shout for joy because you defend them. Let those also who love your name be joyful in you. So we have to choose joy, and we have to declare that in our lives, but we have to choose to trust that whatever it is that I need, he will provide it, and he will surround us with a shield, whether that shield is protection, whether that shield is finances or favor or peace, whatever it is that we need, he will provide that, but we have to choose to rejoice and to have joy in the process. Aren't these girls wonderful? They are giving us some stuff now, I'm telling you. I, know, I didn't mention, we have our study at my mom's house, so it's so fun, so she has to be in it because we're at her house. <laughs> well, actually, uh, they, I s said you can come meet at my house, and then I became a part of the group, and I know I'm the younger one here, <laughs> and, and I trust that everybody wants a shoe like mine this morning, too. <laughs> I'm going to make it real brief because um, she has more. But I think the word trust is something we never, you never will get done with. Because as long as you live and breathe, you're going to have challenges in life or tests or whatever it's called. And you're going to have to trust again. And you're going to have to trust again. And when you think, oh, phew, I worked through that one. It's over now. My life's going to be great. No, you're going to have something else come that you're going to have to trust again as long as you live. And I think that Hannah actually came to a place of peace that was remarkable. She walked out of that place having gotten her trust in the Lord that he was going to fulfill 
what she had asked for. And that is the place that we come to, just like Bethany was talking about, the peace and everything. That's when you know you truly trust the Lord. But believe me, you will never get done with it. Because once that comes, then you're going to trust again for something else. And again and again. Because that's how God builds our character and makes us love him more. As, as we see him uh, come through for us over and over and over because we did trust him. Go ahead. I'm not asking another question, so if y'all okay. have anything else to say on this subject, it's fine. This is really quick. Um, just. <laughs> and our Bible studies are supposed to be an hour, and we're always in trouble by the end. Go ahead. This is really good. Be quick. Um, I think a lot of times for me, and, and I'm just going to say it for everybody, but we just have to have a better attitude in the process. Um, because like Molly says, what other option do we have? You know, I look at people go through circumstances in life, and I don't know how they make it. Like, without Jesus, how in the world do you make it? Um, and, man, we've, we've not arrived. No one up here has arrived. But we've been through some crazy stuff in the last three years. Just crazy and for me personally, I've had to really work on my attitude that I'm going to embrace the process and I'm going to walk this journey out and I'm going to believe that I serve a God who is able and that loves me and that cares about me and that loves all of these people here. You know, all of my most dearest friends are right up here with me and I love these ladies so much, and I look at the things that some of them are going through that just, you know, like you hear Karina speak, and you hear Bethany speak, and they're going through some really rough stuff. So I just want to just encourage you to just work on your attitude. I know that God's really been speaking to me about that, but embrace the process and love the journey. Amen. Go ahead. Grab the microphone because we're recording, so I just we want to hear that again. We may have to hear this again. I, I just want to give you guys a corporate word, your, this group, please. Um, as women, we know friendship, we know love, we know blessing, we know this. And I'm so blessed this morning by this group. But here's what I feel like the Lord is saying to you corporately as a group. It's very interesting in Psalm 46 that he describes the river as her, not him. And I want to read you this verse. 46 says, I think it's 46.4, it says, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. God is in the midst of her, and she shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. Ezekiel 47.9 says this, Swarms of living creatures will live wherever the river flows. There will be large numbers of fish because the water flows there and makes the salt water fresh. And where the river flows, everything will live. God bless you. Thank you, Gina. That's what, you have something else to say? That's what this house is about. I mean, we, um, it's, it's flowing in the prophetic and, and pulling on one another's gifts. We're not about the superstar preacher who heard from God. You hear from God. I hear from God. They hear from God. They blow. Did you hear that? Like, I don't even need to speak a message. Every one of them could get up here and speak a whole session because there's so much richness in every one of them and in you. It's in you too. And it's so important we surround ourselves. That's what God's been teaching me. And I thought this part of the process was going to be awful because we've talked a lot and don't lose what you were going to say. 
we talk a lot about the process being awful and bad and rough, and it can be, but there's a lot of good in the process. Yes, yes. And there's some fun things on the journey. And there's, you know, there's a kid's song that we have to listen to kids music with Sophia. And I would rather listen to that than, um, it's all about that bass. That's what she wants to hear sometimes. <laughs> Anyways, thank you, Jasmine, for letting her listen to that song. So she wants to sing it. But no, we listen to some worship, but there's a, there's a praise kid song called Jesus on my journey. And it talks, I've got my toothbrush and my pillowcase and my this and my that, but I'm not leaving the house without Jesus. Cause I got Jesus on my journey. So it's, but I'm like, you know what? That's what we need. That's what Anna was talking about. We have to have Jesus in the middle of it. It's what Mary Lynn was talking about. Yeah, I see the picture, but ah, oh, but today I see Jesus. So if I keep my eyes on him, I'll get to the picture. And he has to be in the midst of it. And there's a lot of good in the process. I just wanted to, I, I didn't finish. Um, no. And the Holy Spirit really checked me because now, you know, I grew up, I only have three brothers. Now I have this whole group of sisters, you know, and, and I have more family that they're in my business more than you can imagine. And, um, more than I can imagine. And, you know, but I, I want to I tell you, do the work. Do the work. We, we get, we argue with each other. We get very strong in fellowship with each other. And, um, but I would lay my life, and I think I could say anybody on this panel, we would lay our lives down for each other. And it hasn't always been that way, you know, but we do the work. We do the work of getting in his presence. We do the work of trusting him. We do the work of all the things that everybody has said. And, um, and I'm a big fan of this group now. You know, I tell Angela all the time, you need to get these people up speaking in this group. I tell her that all the time because there is so much in this group. And I, I just wanted to come to the end and say, you know, now I have more because I earlier I sounded like I still am mad at this place, but I'm not. I like it here now. <laughs> Most days, most days I like it here, you know, and, and some days are good and they're awesome. And then other days I think, God, will, will we ever get there? But that's what we, that's where we all are. But it's just about keeping our focus on what we have and not on what we don't have. Anybody else on this? That, I just want to clarify what, not clarify, but emphasize what Jadine just said. Part of what gets us through the process is each other. We need each other. Um, and church face and just saying hi and how are you, that's not being there for each other. Um, I'm one of those that likes to be, you know, more appropriate, more proper, and I'm not going to interfere if I feel the boundaries. But that's what also something that the Lord's dealt with me on, to, you know what, if you see a need, you go. Um, and push sometimes when there's resistance. Because you know, you know, you know what they need. They need the encouragement. They need Jesus. Maybe they need something more practical. Um, and that's actually been something I've been, been practicing, not to stay in my little appropriate box, but to go there. And sometimes it's messy, and sometimes it's just plain old fun, and then sometimes you don't even know, should I have done that? And you're like, okay, God, I'm going to have to trust you on that one. Don't know. And you, and you just hope somewhere you're going to get some confirmation that it was the right thing to do. But the part of getting through the process is being there for each other and drawing on each other, knowing that somebody next to you has Jesus in them and you can draw on that. And having the security and confidence in Jesus that they are, they're there for you. What's around you is what's there for you. And that's part of trusting Jesus, too. Well, they could probably go on and on and on. And so I said, listen, I have three questions. We probably won't get through them. That's what I said. And, um, but, you know, Mary Lynn came up to me not too long after my um, dad went to be with Jesus. And I was sitting on the front row. And she said, listen, she came up and sat next to me, you know, in her very gentle, diplomatic, um, passive-aggressive way. And she came up beside me, and she said, 
listen, I know you have up your protection and you keep it up all the time, but I'm about to, I'm going to push through that. I'm going to push my way in. And so I was like, okay, I don't like to be pushed in on, but okay, you know, and, and, but there, there comes that moment where it's kind of like, you need somebody to say that to you. You need somebody to push their way in because my personality is I don't need anybody. I just need me. And God's like, no. And they're like, no. And so, you know, so it's, it's important. And it's, like I said, it's not always perfect. It's not always perfect. It's not always the best. But surround yourself with people, with women that are going to love you and encourage you. They're never going to be perfect. They are going to mess up. They're going to say something that's going to upset you. They're going to fail you. They're going to do something stupid. Just go ahead and reside that that's going to happen. But love them anyway and walk it out with each other because we all do that. And, um, and I just believe that the Monday night before this um, conference, and I'm going to wrap it up with this, but the Monday night before this conference, um, our, all of our volunteer team was here, and God had been speaking to me so strong, and I told them, I said, this conference is going to be awesome for all the women who are here, but some, there's going to be a new, I don't like the word unity, but there's going to be a new belonging in the women in our house. There's going to be a new feeling of you belong and I belong, and we belong to each other, and this is where we are, and this is, this is real, and not like this is oh, this is that group, and then we're over here, and then we're, no more of that. And it doesn't matter where you came from, what you've done, what you haven't done, what color your skin is, what, none of that. We have to come to that place. And so I felt that, and um, how many of you ladies were here Monday night that we talked, we prayed over that? But I just, I feel that so strong. This is just a snapshot, if you will, of what that should look like. And um, I hope we're still friends next year. A priceless. I'm just kidding. <laughs> we will be. But if we made it through the past three years, we're good. We shouldn't say that because God's going to be like, <laughs> okay. Um, anyways, but I just want to thank these amazing ladies. They're awesome. I love every one of them so much. And um, thank them. Now, tomorrow, tomorrow, um, the last session we're going to do is they're going to come back up and they're going to answer your questions. So you can send a question to pricelessconference at gmail.com. Mm. Pastor Aaron said last night on the front row, he's like, oh, I'm sending a question in. I was like, oh, my goodness. Um, but anyway, send, it can be about anything. It can be about your life. It can be about your marriage. It can be about ministry. It can be about what you want for breakfast. I don't know. Just whatever you want to put on there. And I want these ladies to It'll share be what's anonymous, in them. anonymous, by the way. Sorry. And answer that. It will be anonymous, so we won't say your name. Oh, yeah, we're not going to say a name. They're going to be anonymous questions. You'll know if it's yours, but no one else will know. Yes, they're anonymous. So all the people you brought with you, they won't know that was your question about them. And You're it good. Can, sorry, I'm being the delegate up here speaking for, La Jefa. for everybody. Speaketh. And it, it could be, you can ask or request for someone to answer your question if you would like. Specifically, like a specific oh yeah, like person. if you want my mom to answer your question, and it she can be will. fun questions too. If it's from LenBallinger.com, we will not ask those questions. Yes, yes, we will not ask any questions from Pastor Len. But we will tell stories we know about him. Yes, gladly. We have good stories. All right, listen, ladies, um, I hope that you got something out of this session. I hope that this encouraged you. Um, it was a little bit of a reach to do something out of the box, but how many know that that's, Jesus is all about being out of the box. And um, so we're going to take about a 15-minute break, 15 to 20-minute break. And um, there is, there's some snacks and everything out there. Take, go to the restroom and just refresh yourself, whatever you need to do. And um, go try on some lip gloss or something. Well, maybe not because nobody's back there. Yes, you can. I'm hearing the yes, you can from behind me. 